Super duper. Walk it off, Joe, walk it off. <laughs> Sit down, lovely. Sit down. <laughs> oh. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> a lot of things like I haven't really had time to think about doing this in the past couple of weeks so it's just come to a because I've been doing my dissertation and everything else for university so um, it's really come as a shock to come up yesterday and uh, yeah really get into it but uh, yeah <laughs> so We'll get through it anyway. I had a couple of pints last night just to calm the nerves. I think I got to sleep at about one o'clock, so it's uh, yeah, just stressing about it. Once you get that first day out of the way and into your running, you'd be well. I say you'd be fine. <laughs> you got to run ten, nine more. It's day one in it? So there's a few newbies here that are a bit nervous. Um, there's a few others that have done it before that know what's coming and you can feel the quiet tension in the air at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave Braith A Hall at about half past nine and we're going to run anti-clockwise 26.2 miles around Lake Windermere, England's largest lake. And we're going to do that every day for 10 days. One. <laughs> An order race run for Brady to support our you know, children from uh, deprived areas who had not a chance of a decent start in life and they come to Brady and get their lives turned around and you know gives them a chance to uh, progress in this world like you know. It's a bit wet. So I'm the event manager for the 10 in 10 um, and uh, I've been the event manager since 2011. It starts at uh, Brady Hall and runs through uh, Hawke's Head, down to Newby Bridge, back through Bowness, and then finishing on the front lawn here. It's the Lake District, so it'll be hilly, <laughs> but for every up, there's a down. A bit of a, a, bit of a struggle at the moment. Uh, I have not expected to be struggling at this point, so it's a bit of a down, but we've got nine, nine days to make it up, I think. Um, to be honest, it went um, worse than I was expecting. Uh, I really struggled for some reason. If you have a bad run, it does take it out of you because um, obviously you're aiming for that five hours, or I was aiming for that five hours, and when you don't reach it, and it, even though it shouldn't, you've got round, it shouldn't affect you. It does affect you to a point, mm -hmm. but I've, so, there's nine more days, so I can't really think about it too much. So, uh, But we'll, we'll get there, I mm. think. <laughs> It was something that came in um, in the second year of university, so um, it was a placement opportunity at the Brathay Trust for the 2018 uh, 10 in 10, where there was 20 rehabbers from the university who um, were matched up with 20 runners um, of the running the 10 in 10, and initially it was just we were there as supporters for the 10 in tenors. And uh, yeah, um, after hearing their stories and going and treating them and help supporting them through their, their adventure, I suppose, um, I stupidly got inspired to do it. Uh, my name is Dr. Katie Walker Small, and I'm Senior Lecturer and Programme Leader for Sport Rehabilitation at the University of Cumbria. We bring along 20 students every year, and uh, they're assigned to one of the runners taking part in the Brady 1010 event. And it's their responsibility to provide all of the pre run and also post event uh, therapy for them. A lot of the students going through it become particularly uh, inspired by it all, the charity event, um, and yes, all of the runners doing it as well. So it's almost unsurprising that we get to day 10 and there's a few of the students that, that want to undertake the individual marathon in itself. And, uh, and that's a huge challenge for them because they often come into this and they've never run before. They've certainly never done a marathon before. Because they've never been much of a marathon runner. 
through my my school year sort of I was a bit of a footballer, a bit of a sprinter as well, so I've been told sprinting's the wrong kind of running for a marathon, but uh yeah it's uh It'll do, it'll keep me in good stead for the finish. We are at Brady Hall waiting to set off yeah. on our second marathon. We ran, well, ran a marathon yesterday, today's day yeah. two. Yeah. And the weather's looking much better today than it was yesterday, so hopefully it'll be a good run. I'd just like to push myself. If it's easy, why would I bother? <laughs> I struggled really bad with my hip in the first sort of yeah. four miles. Mm -hmm. Then I had a pet top from uh, Paul. He's done wonders. <laughs> Okay, get my music in. Look at the scenery. Bob's your uncle, fan is your aunt. So far. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. We're done. Oh. Good man. Good man. When I was far as diagnosed with a, a cancerous brain, brain tumour and um, yeah, although initially it didn't affect me, it more affected my family because they saw it, I can't remember much of it, I was left with uh, physical scars. It was a grade 2 ependymoma and um, we got to know between Christmas and New Year and he had the had to have an operation on the, about the 2nd of January to have it removed, followed by a radiotherapy, which he had for six weeks. Going up through school and college and everything like that, I wanted to cover the scars, and I suppose that's what kept me from doing things. I didn't want to go out much because I was, I was scared that people see the physical scars. I don't know, I just went through my school life and college life just not really aware of the things um, that you can do in life. Enjoy? Yes. I'll try. Day three and it's, yeah, not too, not too pingy in the legs. It's, yeah, quite a positive day. I've only really started running the last two or three years and uh, at first off it was to sort of kill a few demons and do a bit of soul searching and I'm, I'm still doing that, I'm still soul searching, there's still some repair to do. Um, I want to be a, a, a better person Feeling and that's good. why I run. Oh. <laughs> so that sudden realisation where I need to be doing more, I want to be doing more because in the end if I'm not doing everything I can with my life then uh, what's the point? So in 2009, um, after us running the event for two years, uh, I, uh, I attempted the, the challenge and then um, came back in 2010 just to prove it wasn't a fluke. And each and every day, you know, just getting yourself around a marathon in itself, it's no mean feat, it's no mean feat. So my input in the event, as well as the, the, the base, the structural base to work, is my, the emotional support that I give. Uh, and so, um, so I can be firm and I can be fair and I can be loving and I can be a devil <laughs> to work alongside and see those individuals experience something which I know I've been there and I know what they're feeling and I can look in their eyes and know what they're feeling and they know I know what they're feeling because they know I've been there. That each and every year inspires me and you, you just want to support them you want to, and, you, and you know what they've sacrificed to actually get there. Well I'm Patrick and this is day four of the 10 in 10 and, and we're shortly about to have a nice little poodle around a lovely little lake. I don't, I don't think walking around garden centres was cut out for me or um, playing golf, I'm used to that sort of stuff so it's part of a midlife crisis that uh, hasn't averted yet. Yeah, I'm doing amazing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Go on. 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 Go on.
alright, aren't it? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you pull that from? <laughs> huh? I, I just felt breakfast. so good. People would say to me, how can you do that? My God, that's, I could never do that. But my, my answer to that is, if you're physically able and you want to do it, then you can do it. Um, it's like running a marathon. It's like running a half marathon. If you want to do something, then you'll train to do that. I mean, one marathon event for these guys in a way is almost nothing. It's, it's what they're used to. Uh, but when you have that accumulation effect of it, then it starts to expose itself on the body and any sort of weakness areas, yes, they start to, to become apparent. Um, but they are types of injuries that typically, you know, you might see over a week, uh, weeks or even months they can take to come about, whereas that's obviously massively accelerated by doing a marathon every day. If you took out that component, then your treatment program, it might involve doing quite deep sort of um, soft tissue work. Whereas we know that if you were to perform that, really people can be left quite sort of sore the next day, even two days before they then get the benefits from it. We're looking to do different types of techniques rather than the deep work um, so that they, yeah, they aren't so sore and they're a bit more mobile, ready to go the next day. So we're just as women today because we are coming to cheer up the runners. Yeah, they give me a nice line up, it's halfway through. Look, Wednesday's traditionally ladies' day. Is that the, is that the thing? Yeah, every Wednesday for, well, for every me. Wednesday. <laughs> every Wednesday for you. Yeah. And what are your what are your ladies' names? Have you got alternative names for this for this kind of caper? Sheila. <laughs> what about you? Uh, Jessica. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm a lady. <laughs> it's an incredible physical challenge. Um, particularly for me and a lot of the other runners because we're not spring chickens anymore but it, it, it's, it's a huge mental and physical challenge it, it hurts every day I know how it feels when you finish this and it, it it's intoxicating it's something that I want to feel again and I want to feel again and again So this year we have 17, uh, so 17 athletes are uh, runners, but we call them athletes because they are athletes, because they are taking on um, a massive endurance event. So some of those are returners, but for some it's a very big part of their lives. Um, we have someone come back this year for the uh, sixth time. You know, you might look at an individual and think, ooh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> or you see someone who's really quite tough and you think, oh, you know, good on you. And then as that event unfolds, so you see the different sides. So you see people at their very, very best and at their very, very worst and how they cope with that. And it's, it's, in, it's incredible. It's really interesting. I, I'd say myself, um, couch potato in my, in, in my past life um, and probably a bit of a couch potato now, actually, um, if truth be known. Um, but you know, I've run five marathons. Uh, I've now run 36 marathons. It's like, when, when did that happen? When did that happen? I'm just an ordinary, you know, at the time I was a, a 49 and a 50 year old woman who actually just saw something she wanted a piece of and went out and did it. You know, it's an ordinary person achieving something absolutely incredible. And, and, and that's what you see, I think. That's the beauty of it. It is that, um, yeah, they're just, you know, ordinary, ordinary people just turning up and just loving it, loving it. It is a bit moist. <laughs> it's a bit sweaty. <laughs> Today is day seven of the Breath Air 10 in 10. I've only been running two years. Um, I'd, I'd only done two marathons when I heard about this and as soon as I heard about it, I signed up. I think I'm just addicted to mental and physical pain. 
Are you going to meet up at the bottom? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. cheering on to keep going. Do you think it's the kind of thing you might be able to do one day? Uh, probably if I get enough training. But I went to some real deep places there, uh, mentally, um, and realised how strong I am as a person, and um, and feel that you know anything that's thrown at me, you know I could have a good shot at it. Yeah, it's day eight. Um, just heading down to the start line. We're all hurting a little bit. Some hurting quite a lot. But yes, just go out and get it done now. Okay, so I'll sign the wall. Wait, it's two or three minutes. He gets me around then. When I do get out, I find it uh, so freeing. You can uh, obviously the, there's the first initial two two miles of running where it's uh, quite difficult to get up to speed. But once once you get past the, that, those first couple of miles, it becomes sort of a meditation, I suppose. I found it that if I can do 26.2 miles, I can literally do anything. So it's definitely made me a bit more resilient to uh, just just everything in life, sort of mentally. I, oh my God, I've been become so resilient to stuff like stress, you know, with university. And it's, uh, yeah, it's been good for me. Look at that. Well done, come here. Thank you. Hey, uh, hey. I'd, um, advise people take up exercise in any sort of form. It, it doesn't have to be marathon running, but it just makes you so much better. Eight, two awesome. more to go. Two more. That's good. Look at that, I felt good there. Yeah, Woo. good finish. Damn, I did not feel like that this morning. That's That's come on. <laughs> I don't know, I went to the toilet, uh, um, well, the Bobby Mill, uh -huh. and I spoke to myself and I thought, oh, then someone almost came in my cubicle, no, no. opened the door, and I was like, no, not yet. No. <laughs> I was just, <laughs> just, just that was it. yeah. That's all you need. <laughs> One close so. cubicle encounter, yeah. and you're out. Well, that's all it is. Damn. Wow. It's all because of the runners. I mean, to see the determination. Oh. It, it's amazing. I'm Paul Brown and I did the 10 in 10 last year and I don't think I would have got through it at all if it wasn't for Joe, my superb physio, who was allocated to me last year. And I do feel slightly guilty and responsible for getting him into this sort of thing. But he survived, he's got to day nine and there's just one more to go and that doesn't count. And uh, it was such a good experience, probably one of the best experiences of my life so far. Um, a very emo emotional one with my athlete finishing. K9, nearly there! Come on! It's the Brave family, it's the bubble, and you don't get it until you've been through it, um, even as a physio or a support crew or as a runner. For me, coming out the other side, it was a really emotional thing. Uh, and it is, it's really emotional. Yeah. Day 
10 is your lap of honour really um, because you've, um, you've earned that lap of honour and you set off at 9.30 and then at 10.30 the Asics Minimum Marathon, that kicks off um, and you could have up to uh, a thousand runners uh, running around the same route. To actually be running around and then your fast marathon runners, who have obviously started an hour behind you, are passing you and that feeling is, is incredible really because each and every one of them will tap you on the back, they'll say words of encouragement and, and oh you're inspirational, you're this, you're that and you just feel, you can feel yourself building full of pride and you're bursting almost because it's just such, you, you know the achievement and these are, these are, you know, your, your club runners and you might be the fat lass of the back and someone's passing you and going, well done you, you know. Today is our day, you've earned this, do it for the people who've supported you. Do it for all the people that have donated. Do it for Ali and Mac, do it for Paul and Trudy, Chris and Katie, Michelle, Linda and Jim. Do it for your family and friends who are here to watch you cross the finish line. Do it for your physios, who without their help, we wouldn't have made it today for. But most of all, do it for you, because you're all bloody amazing. So we are Helm Harriers and we are from Spalding and we're here supporting our running friend Di who's doing 10 to 10. Why do you like running so much? Um, the people that do it with yeah, you. Yeah, Most yeah. definitely. Peer pressure. The fantastic <laughs> friends you make through it. This is It's a very big social thing. I mean, it's people who don't run that realise how forgiving and inclusive running clubs actually are. And that, you know, if you go running, you're in. You're in. But I admit at the end of it, then I, I, I sometimes feel like I'm, I'm an empty shell. Um, to see, uh, to stand there on day 10 and to see each person come over the line and be greeted by their family and friends, having achieved what they've achieved, is just so rewarding. I thought I was just tired and it, like I pushed it so hard to get my PB and I, I got my PB and I just pushed it and pushed it and pushed it and I think it was more a sense of I've done it and I did, I, I collapsed but I thought I was conscious all, all the way through. Um, I think I was, <laughs> but uh, it was just that exhaustion and it, it's all just done and dusted. Dot down there, which is I'd always thought page. about something to yeah, sort of commem commemorate the, the event and I was like, so. what better way to mm. yeah. sort of commemorate that moment in a tattoo that's going to be with me for life and th the event will be with me for life. <laughs> so, about two weeks after the 10 in 10, I was able to go out running. But mentally, it was just like, you know, what, where do you go from 10 marathons in 10 days? It's almost like, as you go on, if you go on holiday, you get holiday blues. Because basically, it was a runner's holiday with your mates. And uh, yeah, so 
yeah, it was just knowing, trying to refocus to a different area of things. You sort of have to draw a line, right, that's it. Um, it's a new beginning now because you, you, you've spent a year training up to that event, you've done it and you've just got to draw a line underneath it and then move on. After the last day, so the morning after the big hoo-ha and the celebrations, um, I drove the route back and it was so, so sad. It was sort of sad that I'm not running this anymore. It was, it was amazing, like you'd think that driving it, you'd be so thankful for it, but I was so sad. Yeah, Brathe, like, they talk about the Brathe bubble and once you're in it, you're in it. Like, you see, it's, Brathe is home for me. Uh, oh, my second home, should I say. And you, all you want to do, I was thinking about it so much those, like, two weeks after the event of just reapplying again. And, yeah, I just, I just didn't, yeah, it's, it's amazing because you just want to be back in that family, that family unit. I, I probably would do it again, that sort of thing, because it's just an amazing experience. Probably the worst experience of my life, but the best experience of my life.